you happy Father's Day to all the fathers Amen. here in the morning. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for being here this morning. Can everybody hear me? Okay. I got this. Testing. There we go. Uh, well, good morning. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here. Thank you for your flexibility this morning. Thank you for allowing us to get started a little bit later to be a blessing to another congregation that they can meet in here because the fellowship hall is unavailable. We thank you for just being understanding and being um, flexible. Um, you have always been flexible, and I just want to thank you all publicly for being and doing that. Um, I do have a, a, a thank you card here, and it says, thank you, New Creation Bible Church. Thank you, for church family, for the constant love and support um, in my life. Each and every one of you have had an impact in my life, and that comes from Malik. Thank you, Malik. Um, this Sunday, well, this Sunday is not the last Sunday, but Bree will be here um, just one more week. So today, we want to pray for her. We want to pray over her. Um, just in case she may not be able to make it to church on next Sunday, we're going to pray for her today, if y'all don't mind. So let's, I want to do that right now, if, if that's okay with everybody. So Bree, come on down. Um, and I want us to, to surround her and lay our hands on her um, and, and pray over her that God will protect her and keep her. Um, we, we don't take it lightly, but we do know that the power of prayer is important. So we want to um, surround her. So that, c c come on, come on. Surround her and, 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 lay, and, and lay our hands on her. Step up, Bree. Um, I am going to ask her, um, her grandfather if he would pray for her and pray over her. I just wanted to thank everyone in the church for all the support and stuff and praying for me and always being there for me and off all the gifts you gave me for graduation and stuff. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Let us go to the Lord in, in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy holy name. Heavenly Father, we're calling on you today because you're the only one that we can call on. Now, Father, we, we first of all, we want to give you some praise and, and thanks uh, for the life of Brianna. Uh, she's grown 18 years old. Uh, we know that it's all because you made it possible. And now, Father, we, we lift her up to you because we know that you can keep her. And we know that you can take care of her. And so I'm just her advisor. But, Lord, I know that you are, you are her keeper. And so we lift her up to you now as she begins her new journey. Help her to know that you're always there. Help her to know that she can always call upon you. Help her to always be mindful that you're always there. Help her, Lord, to keep her hands in your hand. We ask that you would keep her through danger seen and unseen. Even though now as she goes out, there's many things that she will experience and we ask that you would go and be with her every step of the way. Give her the confidence to know that she can do all things through you. Help her, Lord, as she faces the challenges ahead, knowing and unknowing. Give her the strength to go through. Help her to push forward that her life would be all that you 
desire for it to be. And then we will give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Miles. Thank you all for, for um, putting our hands and laying hands. I just think there's something about, Scripture shows us that, you know, something different when we lay hands on somebody and we, we pray over them. Um, we also want to continue to pray for the parents and the grandparents that the Lord would comfort them as well. Um, I know I'm a little, I'm, I'm all over the place this morning, but we do want to um, open it up for any prayer requests and praise reports, um, any praise reports that we have. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. If nothing else, they're going to know how to be saved. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Sister Sherry, for your faithfulness to the homeless shelter and you always showing up. Uh, any other uh, prayer requests or uh, praise reports? Yes, Sister Akima. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah, today is Pastor Bell's birthday. Uh, be in prayer for Sister uh, Joyce. Um, any other prayer requests? Yes, Sister Vicki. For your vehicle and praying for your job situation, we pray we're going to, we're going to, we, we know that that's going to be taken care of and God's going to take care of that for you. Yes. Be in prayer for you and prayer for that surgery. Yes, thank you. Um, be in prayer for Pastor Mac. Pastor Mac had to take, um, and Cynthia, they had to take their um, Cynthia's mother to the hospital last night, and they're still there. She's going to be admitted. Um, also be in prayer for the Mac family. They had a death in their family um, on last night. And so um, Brother Mac, is, he, he says he thinks, He's almost expecting to be preaching that funeral on Saturday. So um, I'll, I'll let you know if um, any information about it that comes out. But just be in prayer for that family as they grieve the loss and also take care of their mother um, in, in just that trying situation. Yes, Sister Tammy. Pray for y'all vacation. Yes, we pray. I'm not, we're not jealous, but, but we're going to pray for y'all's cruise that y'all about to go on. Hopefully no, nothing, nothing happens. Um, yes, sir, Brother Romani. You going to Chicago? <laughs> I'm going to say that's the opposite direction of where your parents going. Uh, y'all shipping them out, huh? <laughs> we be praying for Romani. Um, in this trip to Chicago. <laughs> uh, any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? 
Amen. Amen. We'll be in prayer for Lauren. Um, that she, um, y'all don't mind if I share. Um, she's been diagnosed with MS. And so she was in the hospital this week, and but she's home and she's doing better. So we just want to thank God that he's already working. But we pray that um, that the we we can we can pray many prayers, but ultimately we know God is in control. Um, sometimes they misdiagnose MS. Sometimes it's a mild form, and sometimes it's a severe form. We're gonna pray that God's just be in control. Um, Sister Akima. We're going to pray for Sade. Sade shared with us on Wednesday night that she's off probation, so we thank God for that, but we want to continue to pray for her that she gets the guidance that she needs and the help that she needs and the support she needs um, to get back in church. Uh, anybody else? Any other prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this Father's Day. As we look to you, the ultimate father, the model father, the one who cares for his children. And, Lord, in that vein, Lord, we thank you how you care for us, how you watch over us. As Pastor Miles has already said, you are our keeper. You will keep Brianna while she's in the Army. You will keep us each and every day. And so all the prayer requests that were given, Lord, we know that you ultimately know them all. Lord, we pray for Sister Vicky and her work situation, Lord, in her car. Lord, we pray that you will bless her through that situation. We pray for Sister Sherry's blood pressure, that it will be at a level where they can operate on her too. But then, Lord, we pray that she will be able to recover quickly from her oral surgery. Lord, we pray for Lauren, who has been diagnosed with MS. Lord, we know that you could say, nope. That's not the right reading, um, but she does not have MS, Lord. Or you could say, no, it's just a mild version, or it could be a severe version. But, Lord, we know that you will keep her, and you will take care of her. Lord, we pray for um, uh, Sister Tammy and Nikki and Roger, who will be going on a cruise. Lord, we pray that you get them safe travels there and travel back. We pray for Romani, who will be headed to Chicago. We pray that you will be there with him and take care of him, watch over and keep him. We pray for uh, Sister Charday, who's not here with us this morning, but we know that you are where, there with her. And so, Lord, we pray that you just give her the guidance that she needs, the uh, encouragement she needs to get back in church and to do the right thing and to make, the, make good decisions. Lord, we pray for all of the things um, that have been going on in new creation with the building. Lord, we pray that you will Help us to find favor with the insurance company. Whatever it is, Lord, we will thank you for those. The, the, however you decide to handle the situation, we will thank you for that. Lord, we pray for Brother Mac and Sister Cynthia who had to rush their mother to the hospital. Lord, we pray that you will watch over them. We we'll ask that you just bless her, keep her, heal her body so that she can return home. And, Lord, we pray for the death in the family, Lord, that you will comfort them in that trying situation. And, Lord, we pray for any other prayer request that was mentioned that was, that was not mentioned but is on somebody's heart. Lord, we thank you for all the fathers that are here and all the fathers that may be watching. Lord, we thank you for blessing each and every one of us to be um, available and there for our kids. But, Lord, help us to continue to be there for our children um, because that is the reason why we are called fathers. And, Lord, we pray for this day and we pray for this service. Let it be pleasing in thy sight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, just one announcement. There's uh, two announcements. Sorry, there's no Bible study. No, no Sunday school. I know Tammy's gonna jump on me. Uh, there's no Sunday school for the for the summer. Uh, we will announce when summer school when um, Sunday school will start back. Um, it will be probably in August, maybe even September. And then there's also no fourth Sunday fellowship. Sorry, I couldn't read that from back there. Um, there is no fourth Sunday fellowship due to the situation we have in the fellowship hall. Um, and, and we're just going to wait and see how long that's going to take for us to get that kitchen back up to where we can start using it again. 
Um, and then happy Father's Day, like I said, to all the fathers that are here this morning. With that, we're going to transition to continue worshiping God with our giving. If you need an envelope, one should be in the seat. Um, I mean, one should be in the pew in front of you. If not, the, one, the ushers will get you one. There's five ways you can give. You can give via the offering plate. You can give via our website. You can text via Cash App as well as U.S. Mail for those of you that are not present but want to support us um, that may not be here. Um, New Creation, I just like to let y'all know we do get support from people that do not live here. Um, and we just thank God for that. And so if you want to uh, mail a um, support, the address is on the screen um, or is in the chat for you, those of you that are watching via social media. With that, I will turn it over to our ushers who will lead us at this time. Please stand. creation we gonna uh, it's not a traditional father's day message but the good thing about um, Christianity is we call God our father so every message is a father's day message um, but this morning we're going to talk about a prayer for us a prayer for us um, if you would turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 3 um, Every time you hear something, you, you hear it in um, like a bad situation, a death in the family, you always see on, on, on social media, somebody announces it that, I'll pray for you. Um, or, or my prayers are to you, my condolences. And, 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 and I always wonder, do people really pray or, or is that just a good thing and a nice thing to say? 
um, I make it a practice when I, I hear of an issue or somebody shares something with me is to pray immediately. I, I, I've tried to do that. I'm not, uh, I'm not perfect by no means. I, I do forget, uh, but I try to at least pray for it right then and there. Um, and, and, and I realize the older I get, <laughs> the less I remember. So I need to do it right then and there. Or I'm not going to remember later. Uh, uh, but in today's message, in today's text, we, we find Paul is writing to the Ephesian church. And he's praying for them. He's telling them what he's praying for them for. So when in these instances where we do pray for people, what is it that you pray for them for? Just think about your own prayers and your own prayer life. We, we very seldom will pray things that aren't important. We don't, we don't want to pray for things that don't matter. When we pray for people, we pray for things that matter. We pray for things that make a difference, things that will help that person get to where God wants them to be. And so in today's text, I want us to keep that same mindset when we read about what Paul is writing about the prayer for the Ephesian church, because he's not just praying for anything. He's not praying for something that's unimportant. He's praying for something that is truly, truly important and that they this church needs to realize. Um, um, if I, if I, 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 um, I apologize now for you Bible thumpers and Bible scholars out there because I am jumping down to the end of the chapter. I would love to go through this whole chapter, but we would be here for at least an hour, uh, maybe an hour and a half, because there's so much meat in chapter three. It's actually so you really it's a letter. Nobody goes to a letter and just jumps to the middle of a letter and starts reading. So you really would, should, and if you can, read the whole letter from start to finish in one sitting. It's a blessing. It will be a blessing to you. And, 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 and if you do, you just, just know this term, in him. In him. He, it, it's repeated so much in Ephesians. In him. It's talking about our position in Christ and the benefits and the blessings we have of being in him but with that backdrop paul says verse 14 for this reason for what reason he, he he says he's a prisoner if you go back up to chapter three at the beginning of chapter three he says i'm a prisoner for the lord for your sake and 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 for all the things that christ is doing for us and through us and and for you in ephesian church he says for this reason i kneel before the father from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. Uh, interesting note here. Interesting thing. Paul is saying, I kneel. I kneel. That, it, I know it's common for us to think about kneeling as the fo common form or posture of prayer. But back in that day, kneeling was not the common posture. They would stand and pray and actually kind of look up to heaven. And, and so, so he's saying, I kneel to pray. It, it, it's showing that there's a desire there to be praying for this Ephesians church. But then he says, before the Father, which whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. The, the word, it, it literally, it, it's, it's a, it, this is a literal statement. The, the word family in Greek is a derivative of the word father in Greek. And, and so, so it's, he's saying, what Paul is saying is we're a family literally because he's our father and we literally get our name family from being him being the father. That the words are, are, are derivatives of each other. So that's what he's saying. He says, we are. All the names, it says, who every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We're family because he's the father. If we don't know anything else, we're family because he's the father. And, and, and verse 16 says, I pray of his glorious riches. I pray that out of his glorious riches, sorry, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. In your inner being. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, that he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit 
in your inner being. He says, I pray that God the Father will strengthen you through his riches. And I know when you see riches, if you get like me, you get excited. But this is not the riches we think about when we think about riches. See, Paul has already been establishing what the riches are. It's the riches is God's grace. And, 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 and you might not equate God's grace to being riches, but, but the, it's the same idea because God's grace, grace is getting what we do not deserve. And, 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 and if, we're, if we're truthful about it, God's riches, his glorious riches is his grace. His grace allows you to wake up every day. His grace allows you to be able to live your life the way you live. His grace is able to sustain you and give you everything you need. It's his glorious riches. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, out of his glorious grace, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Strengthen you with power power that word power is where we get the word dynamite from it's not just any power it's the same word he that's used when it says the power that i've been given on heaven and the earth i give to you this power is not just any power it's god's power and he says i i want you to be strengthened with power through the his spirit whose spirit god's spirit if you see the trinity is right there the god the father and god the spirit is right here so that Christ, God the Son, there we got the whole, all three of them present. He says, I want to strengthen you through the spirit that's in you. I want you to have the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead in you. I want you to be strengthened by it so that, so that you can be able to overcome because you have the power. But he doesn't stop there. He says, so that Christ may dwell in the hearts through faith. So Christ may dwell in the hearts through faith. New creation, I, it's important we understand two things. We understand our position and we understand our power. Our position, we're in Christ. Paul has, I'm telling you, read the chapter and underline everywhere he says in him. In chapter 1, you probably see it at least 10 times. It, 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 we're in him. Meaning when we become saved, we're not out alone. We're a part of a body. We're a part of the body of Christ. We are now a family. We're now in together with each other as one body. We're in him. Our position is in Christ Jesus. And because we're in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit now takes residence in us. And the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is now where? Not out there in the world. It's in us. And, and so we see that the power of the Holy Spirit and his strength and his riches and his glory and his grace is all there through the hearts of those who believe, through faith, through faith. So the question is, where is our faith in? One thing about Christ and one thing that I've been trying to teach is our relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing in your life. It's not going to heaven. It's not, this is going to sound crazy, it's not studying the Bible. It's not coming to church. It's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, just because the most important thing isn't studying the word of God, the only way we know about who it is we have a relationship with is to study the word of God. You, 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 are y'all familiar with the term catfishing? Catfishing is this idea where a person makes up a fake profile or a fake persona. And they, they go out and they try to establish relationships with people who they don't know. There, there was a football player called Manti Teo who was the, one of the most famous people for being catfished. He was a, a college player for Notre Dame and he got drafted in the NFL and, and he had this fake relationship with a woman 
or may not even, it, 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 I think it came out to be, it wasn't even a woman. It was a man posing as a woman. And he thought he was in a relationship with and was in love with this woman. And if I'm not mistaken, Roger, you got to correct me if I'm wrong. I think he got engaged or was get, going to get engaged to this fake persona. He, he, he talked to her or, 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 or him every day online. And, and, and they, every time they tried to meet, it always didn't work out. And, 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 and he had this relationship with a woman in his mind. But, but, but in real life, it was not who he thought it was. And I believe, I feel like a lot of Christians, we have a relationship with a Jesus we've created in our minds. A God that we have created in our hearts and our minds to be what we like him to be and not what scripture teaches us he is. So our relationship with Jesus is the most important thing. The only way to sustain that relationship is to study the word of God. To understand who he is and not what we want him to be. It's easy when, when, when Jesus tells us stuff that appeals and uh, uh, um, appeals to what we want him to say. It's easy to hear those things, but, but when, when he, he's telling us things that we don't want to hear, we're going to say, oh, that's not, that's not Jesus. That's, that's got to be something else because obviously he wants me to have everything I think I should have and the desires of my heart. I should get everything I deserve. And, and, and that's not Christianity and that's not a relationship with Jesus because Jesus wants us to depend solely on him. And, and, and so when it says we have to have faith, through, hearts through faith, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. He's saying we got to have a relationship with him. The next part, it says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ? Oh, he, it, there's so much in this one sentence that I, I got to go back and read it again. He says, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. He, 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 Paul is saying here, I want you to understand that you are rooted, that, that, that image of, of a plant that is roots are deep in the ground. He wants us to be rooted and established in love. What kind of love? This word is agape, the unconditional love of Christ. He wants us to be rooted and established. He wants us to understand that God loves us. He goes on to say, he says, may you have the power the, 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 again, that word dynamite, uh, together, don't miss this, with all the Lord's holy people. With all the Lord's holy people. That means all of us. It, it, uh, he wants us to, to, to be together. We want to be rooted in God's love, understand God's love so we can grasp. Look at this, how wide, how long. How high, how deep is the love of Christ? How high, how low, how wide, how deep is the love of Christ? He, Paul wants us to understand it and grasp it. Paul understood something that we, I think, sometimes forget we understand the love Jesus had for us, the love God has for us, we, 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 we read it, we, we hear it all the time in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We hear it all the time about the love of God, but, but do we grasp it? 
See, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we understand the love of Christ and what he's did for us, it changes the way we live our life. It changes the way we, how we approach life. Because when we approach life, we understand that God loves us. And if he loves us, he's going to take care of us. And just like all fathers love their children, they're going to take care of them. They're going to give them what they need. All fathers, it, it, he says a good father will do that. And we believe God is a perfect father. So why wouldn't he love us enough to take care of us? And because he loves us enough to take care of us, Paul says, I want you to understand and grasp it. Why? So that you can know what Jesus has done for you, not just so you can know it in the past, but know it in the future, so that anything that comes your way, he loves you, he's going to take care of it for you. It says he wants us to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the unconditional love is of God. God loves you unconditionally. Meaning there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. Even if you sin, he does not love you less. Even if you say, you know what, I'm done with this Christianity, he will not love you less. But his love will chase after you and his love will chase you down and his love will keep you uncomfortable his love will discipline you his love will watch over you his love will take care of you and his love will bring you back that's what we see with the prodigal son the the, the prodigal son got so far out there he realized you know what my father still loves me i could go home and he can at least treat me like a slave or like one of his servants and and when he got back home what happened the father was overjoyed because the father never stopped loving his son. Rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. That's what he wants us to do. And then he wants us to grasp at the understanding and the knowledge of how wide, how deep, how long, and how um, um, high is his love for us. It, meaning, there's no way you could go to escape the love of Christ. It's everywhere. It, it's everywhere. Even when you out there doing what you think is the right thing to do and you have turned your back on Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about Day. If she's a Christian, God's love is going to chase her down. We don't have to worry about the people that are not here. God's love is going to follow them and keep them in perfect peace. It, God's love is wide. It's deep. It's long. It's high. It's going to follow them. But look what else he says. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Oh, man. That you might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This love doesn't make sense. And I don't know about you because there's times when I lived my life and I was unlovable. I should not have been where I've been and I should not have made it through. And you got testimonies just like I do that God's love was always there for you. God's love protected you and God's love got you through. Jesus is saying, and to know this love. That surpasses knowledge. He wants us to know it, not just hear about it. It, it, it. This is an experiential knowledge. You you know it because you've experienced it. You know it because you've seen it. You know it because it's down deep inside of you. This love, the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, may, you might be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. So let me ask you this, new creation. What is it that you're going through? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I hate to be so cast and so, so dismissive because the love of Christ is going to see you through. I, I, I wish I was a, a preacher enough to, to get us to see that God's love is always there. It, and God's love is always there to protect us and watch over us. It doesn't make sense that he still loves us, but he's still there. And he wants us to be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. He wants us to know the full measure of his love. I don't, I, new creation, for those of you that have been married, you know that there's a difference.
difference between uh, just a relationship, a casual relationship, and a relationship that leads to marriage. It's a difference there. And, and, and it's beyond liking somebody. You get to the point of you loving that person. And, 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 and God is in a relationship with us, and he loves us. It's more than just a casual relationship. This isn't a catfish thing here. This is for real. This, this is, this is, if we are saying we truly have faith in him, this love is real. This love is real for the whole world. But see, we've got, it's, the love doesn't change from Jesus. The love doesn't change from God. He loves us unconditionally. You know what changes? Our understanding of the love. Our understanding of the love that Jesus has for us. Our understanding of what he truly did on the cross. Our understanding that we were sinners in need of a savior. Even though it happened in the past, he died for just you and just me. If we understand that love and we walk in that love, then that song becomes true that Jonathan Butler wrote that the praise team sang this morning. Falling in love with Jesus. They didn't know I was going to preach this because I didn't know I was going to preach this when they practiced this last week. But falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that will ever happen for you. Verse 20 says, now to him, who? The, the one that loves you, the one that cares for you, the one who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Can we walk through this one more time? To him who is able, the one who is the creator of this world, the one who has all power, he is more than able. It says now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. This is Paul's super, what they call Paul's super superlative. It, this, this don't make good sense. In grammar, this doesn't. This isn't a good grammar, grammatical statement, but oh, it's good theology because he can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Whatever it is that you are imagining right now on how God's going to get you through your situation, He's going to do more than that. Whatever it is that you hope in your life to achieve. He can do immeasurably more than that. He is able to do everything he says, and he's going to take care of you. I love Psalms 37. It says, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. See, G God hasn't changed. He never changes. He's the same. The thing is, we have to change. We got to understand and grasp the knowledge of his love. Then when we do He'll do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. I know what you're praying for. You're just praying to get through these situations that you're seeing. But he's wanting to do immeasurably more than just that. He's going to take care of you. That's what scripture is teaching us. That's a promise. This is not a, a oh, I might do more. It's a promise. It's a, oh, man, look what it says. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. His power. What power is that? We just saw it. The power of the Holy Spirit that's in us. We Just go back a couple of verses. The, the Holy Spirit that dwells in us is the power that, that we need. That's the power according to his power. That is at work within us. God wants to use us. And, and if you notice, together, if we go back just to 18, he says we have power together with all God's holy people. This isn't an individual thing. If, you, if you've been in Bible study, you know I, I regularly bring up reading scripture as a community. Some things are not just individual. Some things are for the church, 
for all of us who are saved, who all of us who are part of the body of Christ, who are called the Lord's holy people. God only gets glorified when we as a church grasp the knowledge of his love. When we as a church use the power within us to be a, a blessing to each and every one of us that's in the church. And not just in the church, but outside the church. He wants to use us to display his love, not in, just in here, but out there. And so when he does that, that's when he says that the power works in, in us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. You want to, we, we, you know, black people, we talk about generational curses and things that have happened in the past and how they have affected you now and going forward. You want to break that. Just, just, just grasp the knowledge of his love for us. Grasp the knowledge and the power that's within you that wants to use you and um, live through you. And when you that's going to pass through generations and generations forever and ever. See, this is a guarantee that, that God's going to be in control forever and ever. And that love that he has for us will never change. He just has to, he's just waiting on us to understand it and grasp it and understand the knowledge of it, understand the fullness of it, that we can be filled up to the full measure of what God has for us, of that love that he loves us with, that we can go out and show love to people that we don't like. People that don't agree with us, people that get on our nerves, we can show this same love because the power at work within us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us, he says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. New creation, in order for us to fully understand the love of Christ. And understand what is done for us to fully grasp it, we've got to get out the way and allow the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit to work through us. Give up control. Now, that's easier said than done. Give up what you're holding on to. Give up what you are worried about because he loves us. Not because of what we think we can do, but because of what he can do. Because scripture tells us he's able. He's able. He has all power. He's able. And that Whatever you imagine, I love, that's why I love, man, this, this, this benediction right here. Now unto him who, who is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. According to the power that is at work within us, to him be the glory. In the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and evermore. Let him have it because he loves you. Give it to him because he loves you. He wants it because he loves you. He wants you to depend on him and trust him because he loves you. He wants to encourage you and take care of you and be your keeper because he loves you. Help us, Lord, to understand the knowledge of your love for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love, the unconditional love of Jesus Christ that loves us in spite of, that loves us despite, that loves us be not because of what we've done and not because who we are, but because of who you are, because you are love. And because you love us, Lord, we can trust you. Because you love us, you have died on the cross for us. And that was only the beginning. Because you love us, you want to take care of every 
aspect of our lives, and you want us to depend and trust on you. So because you love us, Lord, we are going to place our faith in you. Lord, we ask that you help us to understand and grasp the knowledge of your love for us. Truly embrace how much you love us. Truly embrace the unconditional love that you have for us. And when we truly embrace it, then we'll give you everything that's in our lives and have you and trust you that you will take care of those things. And, oh, Lord, thank you for the benediction that you are able to do immeasurably more than we can think, we can ask, we can imagine. Oh, I know my mind likes to run off sometimes, and I like to go into places where sometimes I shouldn't go, worrying about things that I shouldn't worry about. But when I do, Lord, I want your love to grasp it and turn it in a different direction to, to, to just embrace you and understand the love you have for us, that you're going to take care of those things, and I don't need to be worrying about them. Lord, help us to fully realize your love, fully embrace it so that we have a full measure of your love. And when we do as a collective body, when we do as new creation, then you will get the glory. That's what your word says, and that's what we believe. So, Lord, we pray that you will have your way in our lives. Thank you for being the perfect father who loves his children perfectly. And, Lord, we will give you all the honor, glory, and praise. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the church stand and sing our closing hymn.